HTML hello it's going to be a quick HTML tutorial when I'm going to go through um, just the basics of HTML so that you would know how to use it for web parsing so firstly in order to see the HTML of any web page right click on the mouse and click inspect and it would bring out uh, this right box here which you can see a uh, lots of HTML code here so next I want you to click this button here uh, which allows you to select an element on the page in order to view the HTML code. So if I click here and I hover over it, I could see that the highlighted part on the left corresponds to the highlighted part on the right showing me uh, the HTML code. So there are, HTML, there are several uh, things you could look at in HTML, but firstly, I'm just going to uh, bring this here so you could, you could view it uh, better. Um, I'm also going to close, uh, minimize this because this is the important part uh, where we want to be viewing. So if I hover over, uh, let's say, this entire box, I could, firstly, I click on it, I could see that, sorry, hover over it, I could see that we are, there is a class. So if I see, okay, if I look at this, it's a class. So a class basically corresponds to sort of, you could think of it as, um, as a category so this specific category gs-c-promo corresponds to uh, this name here so to look at more let's say more classes i could again click and hover over here i could see that this is again corresponds to a class gs-c-promo-shading as observed on the right here i could see that if i hover over another block here it corresponds to the same class so uh objects which look similar often have the same class and for example uh, if i hover over this thing this menu bar here if i click on it it seems to have the same class as well okay so now you know classes another thing which i'll show you is anchor tags so anchor tags are basically website tags so if i hover over any link i could see that there is an a anchor tag here so an anchor tag basically corresponds to a website link and you're wondering what this p stands for p stands for a paragraph tag um ul here ul here uh, stands for an unordered list and if you find an ol it stands for an ordered list so if i want to look at this article basically i'm clicking on this article here it should have an anchor tag there if you see somewhere there's an anchor tag there if I click on it it will direct me to a new website because an anchor tag represents a new website and then this website uh, obviously is a new page it has new HTML a new HTML script so if I scroll over this image uh, there should be some reference to an image somewhere so if I look at it yes IMG stands for image if I hover over something else, so this, uh, as you should know, should be a paragraph. So yes, paragraph text there. Um, if, I if I hover over bold letters, there should be some indication of bolding. So B for bolding. However, the, uh, what it's important is to know classes. So if I want to, uh, let's say, get this bold word here, I could, I could see that uh, this paragraph is within the div class. How do I know that? Because it's indented within this div class. So this div class is the big, uh, cat big block of text here. So in this article, the class is this class. And if I go into more specific items, it should bring me down into more indents and it might correspond to a different class. So, okay, if I click on this, it's a paragraph. So that's all the basics of HTML that you need to know. So I'm just going to scroll down to see uh, other things. So if I hover over, I want to get uh, this block here. Okay, so this is an unordered list. As I mentioned earlier, an unordered list is just bullet points. Ordered list is basically numbers, one, two, three, four. Um, you see this link here? Uh, just to recap, it should be an anchor tag. Yes, so on the right, you can see that there's an A corresponds to the anchor tag with a new link. And if you look closely at the anchor tag there, there's a class called SSR CSS. 
And if I'm not wrong, if I go to the next um, anchor tag, it should have the same tag. It should have the same class tag. So if I look at it, it ends at E1 and O5RHV0. Uh, and this one also ends with E1 and O5RHV0. So what's the importance of all these uh, specific classes? So one thing that you might want to do in web parsing is that you want to get all these links. And the similarity between all these links is that all these four links have the same class. So you, you want to grab all the items in the code with the same class and this allows you to grab all four links. Obviously, another, another way is to grab um, all the anchor tags. So any anything with an A tag, you want to grab it. However, that's less specific because besides these items here, you would grab basically all the other links which also have anchor tags in them. Um, so that's all I would like to cover uh, in this brief HTML course. And with this knowledge, it should be sufficient for you to do web parsing using Python. Thank you. Daily life and the automate Python lecture series. The goal of this series is to encourage you to use Python to automate regular Python tasks in your daily life. And today's particular lecture, we'll be going over web scraping. So what are web scraping? So web scraping is basically going over a website and taking important information that you want from a particular website. So some of its uses could be like uh, scraping a news website for the latest articles of the day or uh, screening a financial website to get the latest stock prices. So how so now in this particular lecture we'll be scraping over a website a website of my friends so I gotten permission to scrape this website and this website is just a blog so it's called pumpkin world I'll definitely encourage you to check this out so it's just um, my friends views on the latest issues on life. Again, I would like to emphasize that um, you would need permission in order to scrape a website. So just don't randomly just go scrape someone's website. Okay, so let's move on. So for this web scraping exercise, I'll be using a library called Beautiful Soup. So firstly, I would want to import Beautiful Soup. So to get beautiful soup is from the BS4 library. Import beautiful soup. There's also another library which I want to import, which is request. So request is basically me trying to uh, request a URL from the web. So I import loot two libraries, beautiful soup and request. Okay, so. Firstly, I want to get the URL that I, of the website which I want to parse. So I'm going to call. I'm going to copy the URL of my friend's blog website. Um, so I don't want this particular page. I want to get. So my goal now is to get the latest blog articles. So I would want firstly want to go to the blog page. Um, and my goal is to get these titles here. So firstly, I'll copy this URL and I'll go back to my web scraper tab and I'll enter the name of the URL which I've just copied earlier. And this is when I'll use the request library to request that page. So request.get that particular URL. So now that I have um, gotten I've requested the page and it's stored in this page I want I would now want to use beautiful soup library to parse over all the information in that page so I'll create another variable called soup and I will call my beautiful soup library and if I click I see a beautiful soup takes in all these features here but you, you don't need to know most of this all you need to know is that the first thing you would want to enter is you want to enter this page here dot content so that means you want to get the page content and the second thing is a parser 
Again, you don't have to know much about this parser, it's just how you parse over the information on that web page. Just use html.parser. Okay. So now if you run soup, you could basically see all this um, information here. What are all this information here? I'll go through later on. So this is basically the HTML code that is in that website. Okay, so now that you know how to get uh, all the information on all the HTML information of a particular website, now I'll teach you how to get specific informations. And in this exercise, we'll be going over how to get the specific titles uh, in this page. So like these bold titles here. Okay, so if you go back to this um, this page here, curiousmongain.wordpress.com, again, uh, I'll encourage you, you, uh, you, you are given permission from my friend to use this website to try your parsing as well. So firstly, I'll right click and I'll go to inspect. So this allows me to inspect uh, all the codes in this page. So if I click here and I hover over this, I could see that Okay, so firstly, I need to close this so I'm able to see. So if I hover over this again, I could see that this, if I click here, I could see that this is an anchor tag, it's highlighted here, and it's within the H2 class and the division class. If I click somewhere else, uh, let's say this image here, I could see that this image is stored here. And again, I could check it out. Uh, I could store, I could check this about here. Again, it's another anchor class. So anchor, if you see an A here, most likely means it's a website link to another page or website. So I'm only interested uh, in this bold titles here. So I'm just going to click and click here. So if you see, um, if you are, firstly, you want to compare the similarities between all these bold titles. You can see that this title, it's in a H2 class and it's also in a div class. If I click at this title here, I could also see that it's in the div class, it's the same div class, and it's in the same H2 class. And inside the H2 class, there's again an anchor tag of another uh, page of the website. And lastly, I'll check the last one to check the similarities again. Uh, again, I can see it lies within the class entry wrapper and also the class uh, entry title. So moving back there. So now that I know this information after inspecting that web page, I know what to find. So I know that in order to find all those bold titles, I would need, I would firstly need to go into this class here, uh, entry title class. Because all these uh, titles are inside the entry title class. So to start off, uh, I would, I would click results. I would, I would I'll make a new variable called results and it is the soup. So this is the soup element, all this information here. And we use a method called find all. So this method basically finds uh, everything that I want in that particular web page. And I'm searching for, if you recall, I'm searching for the H2 tag. So the H2 tag. So firstly is the tag. And then the second argument would be the class. So again, if you uh, if you're not sure what arguments it takes, just click Shift Tab, and you can see um, the number of arguments it takes. So I'm basically entering into the name. So the important thing is the class here. So there's always an underscore in the class. You don't want to enter just class equals to. You want to enter class underscore. And the class I'm looking for is entry title so I would click entry dash title so if I look at the result of my results variable I could see that it has narrowed out from narrowed down from all this um, information here to specific information that I want but this is still messy so what I get in the h2 class is a URL an anchor tag URL and the name of my project title. Okay, so if I go back here, I could see that I get whatever 
is between here this line here and this line here between this h2 uh, tag however now that i have received all elements all items in the h2 class i could see that it's still a bit messy so what i only want is this project title and not all this uh h all these websites over there so to separate out the titles from the websites firstly i'm going to create a dictionary called title and i'm going to use a function to sort out to separate out the title and and the website so firstly um, i'm going to pass through one by one the results here so you can see there's four there's four results in this results variable there's one two three four the four h2 classes so for i in results i want to uh, firstly get the title url and to do that i could I could um I could just do this i dot get text sorry get text is a method so basically what i dot get text does is it takes the text uh inside this bunch of code here so it only takes out this text here how to not look like a free loader in projects and um, if you still if you don't know how dictionary works, I would recommend you to check out my other course on Python basics. So this is basically a key of a dictionary, and I'm going to tie it, the key to an object. So the object would be. So what I'm planning to do here is that the key of a dictionary is the title of a dictionary, and the object is the URL of a dictionary. So to get the URL. Uh, again, I dot find. So find is instead of find all, it just finds for the first instance. So I want to find for an anchor tag A. So anchor tag is denoted by A. And in this anchor tag, I would want to take out the href argument. So the href argument basically stores this uh, website URL here. And now if I check my dictionary, I could see that it has key and it has um, the project name as well. Okay, so now what I'll do now is to uh, print it out in a nicer format. So to print it out, I'll just use a print function here. So I put num equals zero there because I would want to number my printing results. So here I'm just going to print num. I'm going to print. Uh, I, I'm going to print all my title. I dot get text. So now if I print it, you could see that uh, these are the four results that I get. So these are the four article websites in that page. So there's one, two, three, and lastly, four. Okay, so now that you have gotten the titles and you have also gotten the URLs stored in a dictionary. So now what I would want to do is that I want to open the web page just by entering this title. To, use, to do that, I could import another library called the web browser library and if I want to read a particular title I would just have to use web browser dot open the particular title okay so to import web browser now I want to uh, enter in that name of the title page into the web browser so the web browser takes in a URL so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a variable called blog post. I'm going to input. So this is a user input. Enter the title of your page. 
and I'm going to create another I'm going to make I'm going to enter this blog post into the web browser dot open so web browser dot open title URL and I'm going to take in the blog post argument So enter the title on my page. I'm just going to copy the free loader problem. And to open it, I'll run this. And voila, the particular article opens up. So what does this look like in a practical application? So uh, in, in a practical application, you won't want to use a Jupyter Notebook to this. You would want to use um, you want to either put it into another IDE so it's much easier to run. So for example, I've stored it in a text editor and I save it as a .py file. So, so what I do is I just click uh, web scraper .py. I need to click Python before I run a Python script. And voila, it's the same thing that you see in the Jupyter Notebook. If I want to read an article, I'll just copy and I would paste it there. And the web page again would open. And thank you for watching this lecture. And I look forward to seeing you again in the next uh, lecture on this lecture series. Oh. Hello, welcome to the exercise lecture. In this lecture, we'll just be going over uh, what we learned. For you. It's a place where you can practice what you have learned. So in this exercise, what we want to do is to get comments from, from the blog post. So what I mean by that is firstly we'll go to the blog page and you can see that in this blog page there are several articles so there is four four at this time of uh, viewing and I want to get the comments from each post so for example if I click at this blog content I could see that um, uh, that, that there is no comment here so this blog post has no comment so I'm just gonna go no comment is fine. I'm going to go back to the previous page. So go back to the previous page. Oops, my window refresh, but okay, I'm just going to back to the previous page and where I will get another uh, article. So I'm going to refresh it. Uh, I'm going to go to another article. So the first one doesn't have any comments. The second one has uh, four comments. Uh, so this is where I would just, I would get all four comments for this blog post and then, and so on for the other uh, articles as well. So if I look at this third one, let's see if there's any comments there. So yes, there is two comments here. So um, we'll get these two comments there as well. So just the gist of it, for each blog post, I want you to get the comments for every blog post. I'll encourage you to try this yourself um, before coding out. Take some time, plan out your thoughts. What, how am I going to do this? And then only start coding. Uh, and I will definitely attach the solutions in the next lecture as well. Well, all the best. Thank you. Solution lecture. Where I'm Welcome to the exercise solution lecture, where I'll be going over the solutions for the previous exercise. So um, this is how I want this is how I want uh, I have in mind so the topic of the blog title uh, with the comments in a list so for example the third one the topic is what school should I be teaching you and then there are two comments uh, separated by a comma so to start uh, I'll be again using the beautiful soup library so I'll start from the top so firstly I'm going to import the beautiful library from BS4 Beautiful soup, and I'm also going to import request. So these two libraries you should already be familiar uh, in the lecture content previously. Next, um, I, I would I would want to use the request to get my URL. I would want to parse my URL through the HTML parser of Beautiful Soup. So firstly, I gotta get my URL, and URL would be the blog page. So if I go back to my blog page. Uh, it would be under block and I will get this URL here. So this, just to reiterate, this blog post has 
at this time at this point for four articles and I want to get these titles of these four articles so firstly I have to parse this blog page so my URL is the blog page it has to be entered in a string and then I would request the page it's very similar to the to the um, lecture earlier because basically all I want to do is just get the titles of the page which you should already be familiar by now so beautiful soup and then I put in my page content and as well as the HTML parser don't worry about the HTML parser here html.parser it's just one um, of the ways to parse your HTML web page. Obviously, there are other parsers as well. Uh, if you want, you could read more on Beautiful Soup documentation to get the difference between uh, these different parsers. And if you look at Soup again, this is basically the entire HTML of that page. So next up, uh, I want to get the bold titles. And if I go back to this page, I will click Inspect. And I could see that these titles, um, these titles, sorry, here, if I click on it, I can see they are within H2, they have a H2 tag and a class tag called entry title. So that's what I would want to key in to find all these four titles. So all these four titles have the same H2 and the same class tag with entry title. So now that I know that, I know th this is what I want to find and I'll store it in the term call results. So soup, this is basically the soup content, soup.final. So find all basically finds all the instances and find only finds one instances. And I'll find h2 with a class. Remember, class has an underscore called entry title. And if I print my results out I I could see there is nothing so that's a bit weird um, probably something wrong somewhere let me just check again um, it's probably something to do with my entry title so entry title here is a dash whereas mine is underscore so it's a slight typo error if you don't make any mistakes just double click this and copy I'll go back over and I'll paste it so copy and paste uh, you avoid mistakes and now you can see that there's four h2 class um, with the four title corresponding the four title names on that page so now that i have the four titles um, to get this result i would want firstly to create two things um, firstly it's the title i want to get the title and i want to get the url as well so firstly, I'll call it basically uh, topics and titles. So topics is basically just the URL and titles is the name of the page. So two lists for, I would use a for loop to pass through my results because there's four items in my results. And this, you should be familiar again with this is basically the same from the lecture. So I will get text. What get text basically means is that I'm going to get uh, the, the text within this. So only the text. And I'll also run this code here. This basically removes any uh, formatting. Because uh, sometimes this has formatting like spaces, which has, which has stuff as well. You can ignore this if you want, because it's just uh, formatting. So you might wonder, um, how do I come up with this like, this thing here, this weird thing here? All I did was just uh, Google it, and I I found it. So if you if you see some weird formatting, just Google it, and you you most likely be able to find it on Stack Overflow. So comma you dash. Okay. So now that this is done, I'll enter in the next line, which is, so now uh, I'll tie string to titles, so titles.append string. 
So basically the title is just this bold these titles here. So titles we have uh, titles. Now I want to get the topics which is the URLs. So I would append the URL inside there. And I'll use find this instance. So find uh, unlike fi find all, I'll find that it's just finding the first instance. And A, just a recap, it's an anchor tag. So I'm finding basically this href here within the anchor tag. So HTTPS, all this stuff there. Okay, I'll run it. Say name string is not defined. So I accident it should be an equals to here. Name title is not defined. So it should be titles. Okay. So if I look at my topics, I could see there's four URLs. Perfect. And if I look at my titles, uh, there is four project title, which is perfect as well. Okay. So moving on now to the next step. So now that I have my topics and my titles, I would want to get my comments from each of those titles. So the thought process that I have is that I want to go into each URL. So each URL and I would like to, for each URL, I'd like to get the comments out of it. So the method which I'm going for is a for loop. So I'll go to each URL and get the comments out. So uh, in terms of how that would work, it would most likely be like that. I would go to, I'll iterate the first URL and then I'll extract its comments. And then the for loop will pass through the second URL because each URL is different. You can see at the top here, it's different. And then I'll again go down to get the comments. So one thing that I need to do uh, is to inspect again each URL and find whether and find the class for the comments. But before I do that, let me just uh, write the framework for it. So firstly, I'll create a list, an empty list called comments and I'm going to create a for loop to pass through each URL. So for topic in topics, I'm going to use the request again, like before, you should be familiar with this dot get topic. So this code, this piece of code is basically the same thing like at the top where I'm requesting that URL. And then I could copy this as well. Um, I will enter here, but I'll change the name so that's less confusing. I'll call it this time HTML uh, content. It's not page, it's called post page. And I could use the same parser, no problem with that. And if you remember what I did after after uh, calling the HTML parser is I use find all. So again, I will copy this because I want to find find basically find all the comments but this thing here would be different so I'm going to delete it and this of course would be different as well instead of soup it would be HTML content so now I want I want to know which class um, I should find so I'm going to go to that web page I'm just going to go to I know the first one has no comments so I'm going to go to the third one I'm going to right click, inspect it, and scroll down to the comments. Uh, so this two comments, there's two comments here. I'm going to inspect and I can see that this uh, comment content is in a class called comment content. So I know that the class is called comment content and the content information is in a paragraph. So I'll double click this, I'll copy this class name. I will go back to my Jupyter notebook and I would paste what I've copied. So the class is comment content. I'm also going to create another list because there's more than one comment. I basically want to pass through each comment and append it to that uh, list. So for X in, this be result 
So again, not to get confused, result. I'm going to append the comments to the holder. Find p dot text. So what this basically does is I'm finding for that paragraph. So if I go back here, there's a paragraph. My comment is in that paragraph. And I'm going to get the text within that paragraph. That's why the dot text. Again, don't worry if you don't know this code. A lot of it can be Googled. So you can Google, find in Google like how to get text on a paragraph uh, using Beautiful Soup. And you can probably find this piece of code here. But anyway, since there's more than one, for each paragraph, uh, each paragraph here, so there's uh, one here, there's probably another one here, so that makes it two paragraphs. So I'm going to use a for loop to parse through this to get each and every comment. That's the reason for this second for loop here. And lastly, once I have gotten um, all these comments in this holder, I'm just going to append holder uh, inside comment so again just to reiterate the concept I'm going to pass through firstly I'm going to go to the first URL pass through all the comments and append it to this big big comments list and then I'll go to my second URL empty up holder view up holder with a new comments there and then again attach it to uh, this list called comments I'm going to run this piece of code and because there's four URLs comments has four items in it let me let us just double check so if I check the land of comments it should have four items in it and yes that's right there's four items in it so now that we know that uh, everything should be correct we want to check the content of comments and you could see uh, as we're seeing just now that the first one is empty the second one has a comment perfect that one also has a comment as well and the last one also the last one also has a uh, content so we have four lists in four lists for four uh, different comments and lastly, to put it in a nice form, I'm just going to iterate over over each title. So len titles, and I would print titles as well as the comments. And there you go. So that's all. All the best in trying out this problem.